This is the ZMAR Podcast. Elite Benefits of America helps small and mid-sized companies with their health insurance programs. And now, your host, Butch ZMAR. Welcome back to the ZMAR Podcast. Today is St. Patrick's Day, and uh, we're going to talk about green and getting more green. I figure I'd start off with uh, a Navy story about a whole bunch of green stuff. Out at sea, we definitely still celebrate holidays. So guess what? We had corned beef and cabbage. The only downside to the whole thing is you had a two and a half hour wait in line. So you had to go through shift changes and you either had to eat early or late if there was anything left. Usually you did. There was usually not um, a scarcity of uh, food out at sea when you're trying to feed uh, 7,500 men and women on board a ship. The peanut butter and jelly, though, that would run out. But uh, the good stuff uh, usually stuck around, especially the surf and turf. Good times. But standing in that ladder well, there was no easy waiting. And then, uh, this is before you would take your phones with you. This is before... Our Internet really was a thing. Um, even Google was in its infancy. It was prior to Facebook and all that other fun jazz that people use in social media. So we had to stand in line and create conversations with people or completely ignore them. And then after waiting two hours in line, and that's when a whole bunch of these uh, chiefs showed up and cut in front of your line, and you had to wait until they were done. Or in some occasions, you had uh, a Navy SEAL team or a Navy dive team that showed up, and uh, there's like six or eight of them that you had to wait behind. And so just to aggravate you uh, after waiting two hours. One thing for sure, there was no green beer at sea, unfortunately. They, they, they ruined some of the fun. All they did was provide fake beer, uh, non-alcoholic, and they would give you two tickets to ration it. But there are people out there that sold their tickets to those who wanted to, uh, to increase their alcohol content uh, on the 0.07% or whatever's in non-alcoholic beer. Uh, but uh, no green beer other than the, the green label that shows up on non-alcoholic beer. And some will actually dress as leprechauns, which is kind of weird because we have limited capacity on board the ship. But uh, hey, uh, anything to keep your mind uh, from going insane. So in the aviation world, we had colored shirts. And uh, in the maintenance department, which is where I was at, we had a bunch of green shirts. Even though I was in the maintenance department, um, I actually wore overalls because we didn't go into flight deck. It was mainly a flight deck requirement of all of these color shirts. Green was definitely for avionics, so the squadrons would have their green shirt guys. We were uh, in air-conditioned shops at 40 degrees, freezing our buns off, and uh, wearing winter jackets because the air conditioning is so cold. They had to keep it cold in order to keep the machines running without overheating. Uh, so that's uh, where our, my work environment versus being in the Middle East um, in 100 degree weather on a flight deck with steam coming from the catapults, that would be hot and miserable. But there's a position for everybody out there to make the Navy work. And then there was other shirts, red shirts, blue shirts, and yellow shirts, and all kinds of other shirts. Um, so if you ever see an aviation uh, video or movie, uh, you might see these different color shirts. Fighter jets, some of them had green on there. F-18s uh, had tints of green, but that could have been because of their Marine Corps squadrons in the early days. They also had green displays and green glass in the cockpit. So quite an experience to see all that. And not that it's uh, luck of the Irish, but... I do have a luck of an Irish story. So it was around March 2001. Um, we actually left for deployment in November. So this is a few months into cruise. We were working on this S3 Viking. It's an anti-submarine warfare. Uh, that plane was old as dirt. It is now decommissioned. They were still using them at this point. We had eight airplanes on board on these S3 Vikings. Um, coincidentally, we had seven out of eight airplanes down for this uh, infrared camera that picks up images below the surface, hence the anti-submarine warfare. But this is built in the 60s, and they were still using them in the 90s and uh, early 2000s. Today they're using more sonar technology and radars. We normally would work 12-hour shifts at seas. We were increasing it to 15 to 18-hour shifts. Uh, they even sent out manufacturer repair reps, support reps, and even other scaled personnel on board the ship to help out and nothing, absolutely nothing actually worked. The problems uh, that we were facing would move from airplane to airplane, but somehow this pod was the, uh, or this box, if you want to call it, we call them pods, were to blame. We had so much heat coming down because we're in the middle of 
the Middle East. It was before 9-11. There was heat picking up in the Middle East, literally. There was a whole bunch of activity that was going on, and we were getting some pressure uh, from the Fleet Admiral. So to give you an idea of Fleet Admiral, uh, if anybody's ever watched the movie Pearl Harbor and Admiral Nimitz uh, stepped in to try to change the direction of the World War II, well, he was an admiral, but um, he was in charge of that uh, Pacific Fleet. So this admiral was somewhere in the Middle East. We didn't see him, but um, the pressure was definitely coming down to get these um, planes back up in the air. So we just kept working around the clock. Um, our argument was the airplane could still fly without the camera, but they really just wanted them to fix so they get them back up. And so we just really just started from scratch, tore everything apart down to the chassis, which is the bare bones of the, the box, and we rebuilt these camera pods. And coincidentally, it all worked. And uh, it was around March of 2001. And so I would definitely call that the luck of the Irish because anything that was electrical there didn't really pan out the way that we had planned or was trained for. It just kind of worked in the end. And so that's my luck of the Irish story for you on a little bit of military background. So let's talk about getting more green, right? Everybody wants green. So let's talk about green in your pocket. So for employers and employees. Most of us uh, employers are off cycle on the renewal, which means the renewal is not until the fall. So therefore, the open enrollments are not going on. The only thing that's going on right now is onboarding or offgoing employees, uh, terminations and whatnot, uh, not really a change in benefits. But the first thing I would recommend, especially in the off cycle season, is to um, move to a technology platform. There are employers out there with hundreds and hundreds of employees that are still doing uh, paper applications for their employees. Some just feel like it's easier because it's one PDF and they just uh, easy to move it around. And then at the renewal, if nobody wants to make any changes, they just don't collect any applications, which is really not the right way to do it. And so right now I would recommend moving to a technology platform. This will not force an open enrollment. Um, it'll just get the employees engaged and familiar with the portal um, they'll elect their benefits. Um, uh, in some cases you could elect it for, for them in the backside, but, uh, you essentially get on there and start managing the benefits. This will streamline everything to help manage them all in one spot from, for HR or the employer. So this saves time as far as trying to manage employees or onboarding or termination. Uh, but it also helps the broker for servicing. A lot of the employers that work with, uh, broker insurance brokers or consultants or advisors a lot of times these technology pieces are free sometimes there's charges um, but there it's very minimum and it's worth the fee this system the technology uh, will help with any future hires for onboarding taking care of the uh, i9s and the w2s and payroll information so that way you're not doing multiple systems or multiple steps um, it's left up more to the employee to take care of um, so HR or the employer or office manager will have to implement a little bit more strategy to get them to log in and engage. Some will create kiosks inside their workplace to, uh, to make it easier, uh, but everybody's got has to engage uh, at some point. But it'll make it a lot easier to put all the information in there, and then it's one report that gets downloaded that you could, um, in some cases, upload to payroll some will just have to manually put it but it's all in one report it makes it a lot easier to see and put in place and the math is already done for any benefit selections and in some cases it can actually be synced up with payroll depending on who your payroll provider is and that will save you tons and tons of money um, and time and so time more than anything because you're pulling payroll reports and having to compute or put them in. And if there's any minor changes, you won't be able to update them in time in most cases, unless you're really efficient. But at least if you create an automated system, if an employee makes an adjustment, such as a dependent ad or an address change, they don't have to bother you. It's just automatically done. With these I-9s and W-2s, we'll get the compliance in a second. But when's the last time you even update them? You have employees that have been working for you for years and I-9s are outdated, or you don't have a copy of the ID, uh, IDs. Maybe you never did I-9s because you never heard of it before, um, which is a requirement for HR purposes, and it is a violation with a fine. And so those are just some things you have to take care of. It'll take two to four weeks to implement, depending on time frames and, and how much commitment you could put to it. You could get it done in two weeks, though, and then um, everything's locked up and loaded up. And so you can carry on for the rest of the year managing your benefits online 
um, and a technology platform versus having to do paper and file cabinets and have to do your own manual research. Uh, it could be just a keyword stroke to, to search something or pull something, uh, such as a report, payroll report, benefits report, whatever it might be. This will put money back in your pocket, uh, in some cases immediately, um, but obviously in the months and years to come. It would definitely save money, put green back in your pocket. Hey gang, ever wonder what it's like to be a small business owner? It's confusing, weird expenses coming out of nowhere, and when you throw in health insurance, forget it. Nobody understands how that works. If you own a business, big or small, it's one of the biggest expenses you have all year long. And yet, we all wait until open enrollment at the end of the year, and then we think to ourselves, next year, next year I'll get a jump on it. And then it's another year of paying way too much. If you're a business owner, big or small, HR representative that wants to impress the boss, give Butch Zemar of Elite Benefits of America a call. Save yourself or your boss thousands or even tens of thousands of dollars a year. Reach out to Butch right now, 708 535 3006 or shoot him an email butch at elitebenefits.net and be sure to check out the zmar podcast don't wait till the last minute put butch zmar to work for you now cost containment more or less saving money real dollars right well we're off the off the renewal cycle it may be a good time to review it in some cases um like right now we're reviewing benefits packages mid-year and making shifts because the pressure's off, the first of the year is not there. If we need to delay it one more month because of health uh, applications or um, some other logistics or some other issue that's going on, somebody went on vacation, somebody's out of town, whatever it might be, we have a little bit more time, a little bit more flexibility. And then you might see some savings. Um, in some cases, we've been able to make a mid year shift and we're talking about a 25 to 35% savings. Uh, so it's, it could be a huge direct impact uh, mid-year uh, while we're in the first quarter. But by the time we put this together, it'll be almost mid-year. And everything will save you money going into the second half of the year. More profitable. Maybe the employees will be more engaged, uh, which means more profitable for the company, which is green, green, and more green. So another thing you do is request educational material from your insurance broker or consultant. Educational material could be something you can email out or print off and give to employees or have an employee meeting and discuss these options um, or what's available. And the biggest thing is definitely limiting certain access to care, not directly, but indirect um, by education. Like a lot of people run to the ER not realizing the ER expenses are the most expensive. Um, emergency rooms do charge a lot more than the doctor visit. So you're better off going to urgent care, but the employees may not know that. And so by telling them that, it could be a direct um, impact to the bottom line. Now, a lot of the Affordable Care Act plans out there and traditional plans this won't make that much an impact right away, but if you build the practice and eventually come off of the Affordable Care Act plans, you have a lot more control of pricing, and you could save a ton more money. Uh, just because it's an Affordable Care Act plan does not mean that it's really, truly affordable. There's many, many other options. Uh, smaller groups may not qualify for those options until they get bigger, and that's unfortunate because some really try out there to save money, and they just can't do it because they're not big enough yet. But you don't know until you try. Another thing is um, encourage them to do virtual visits versus uh, in person. Uh, in some of the cases, the virtual visits are no cost to the employee, which is direct impact to their bottom line at home. So they're not shelling out even a copay uh, and they're not driving anywhere. So they're saving gas and time and they could probably schedule it more convenient than taking a day off of work, which means the employer is losing productivity. So there's more savings there. Implement employer paid benefit to help with all this. So there's packages that you could buy for very little money to help manage claims um, by trained professionals. Sometimes claims come in and employees are spending their working hours um, to make phone calls to ma figure out what's going on with this claim, like uh, high deductibles. Then they're trying to figure out why they're being overbilled or if they're being overbilled. Well, you can put together an uh, employer pay benefit that's really inexpensive that actually the employees can actually call and actually get that assistance for them. And then they work on their behalf behind the scenes to help um, their employees be armed with information and even resources to go back to the claim claims person or the billing office to figure out what's going on to save them money. In some cases, and the biggest example I always give is 
sometimes just my knowing a little bit, you may call up and find out that there was a billing discrepancy and they wiped the whole thing out. But these employees can be intimidated and they may overpay on the bill when they didn't have to. And how would they know, right? So implement a program to help manage those claims. Implement an easy way to do teledoc or uh, doc service and, and recommend that it's a rite of passage to do most doctor visits. Technically, in most situations, you could just make a phone call if you need a quick antibiotic, some of the normal stuff that kids go through, ear infections, um, small common colds, those things can be handled very easily, and then home remedies as well. Employee assistant programs that are available for inexpensive costs, all in the same package too, in case somebody needs uh, additional help because of certain stresses that are in their lives. And then an app to manage it all in one app, their ID cards, um, and even vaccination cards, and there's a whole bunch of stuff, but it's right easy on one app instead of multiple resources. Other thing you do is look at implementing wellness programs so they can get in better health, which means they're more productive, which means more to the bottom line, and this will save you more money sooner rather than later. Let's talk about employee incentives. So we talked about some of it above, giving them incentive to do the um, different habits. But since we're talking about mid-year review, we might be able to implement other things such as no-cost doctor visits um, at high-quality facilities. You can provide an education program to reduce claims. Educate your employees where the claims are coming from and why it has a direct impact on your premiums. Maybe even look at uh, reducing or eliminating the out-of-pocket expenses entirely for procedures such as outpatient testing or even surgeries at specific high-quality healthcare systems. So just because they're down the street or they put a lot of advertisement out in the local area doesn't mean that they're the best place to go, but you could create programs that are already in place, depending on the broker and consultant that you work with, that if they went there, they could reduce their out-of-pockets, cut in half, or eliminate it altogether. And in some cases, eliminate the PPO network all entirely as well. So if they decide that they want to go somewhere else, uh, they have flexibility. They don't have to worry about being restricted by a network. So these programs are all available to save everybody money. Um, it just depends on you picking up the phone and calling us or your broker and challenging them a little bit on moving in that direction. The last area would definitely be compliance. Uh, this is not a green area, but uh, it's definitely will save you green by avoiding penalties. And so 125 document is the most uh, overlooked document for small businesses. It is the document that allow, IRS allows you to do pre-tax deductions. I always call it the busted taillight uh, syndrome when you're drinking and you had to get pulled over and you get a DUI. You're just giving the IRS agent more reason to keep going further. That's all it is. It is a pretty good penalty uh, financially. So make sure it's updated. If you didn't do it at the renewal or you didn't do it at all, make sure you get that done. It's not that expensive and it's far cheaper than any penalty that would be imposed because they'll backdate that to the day that they choose. And so if you've been in business for five years, well, they could backdate that long. and They can negotiate that, but it's still going to be a pricey penalty. Same thing with the wrap document. Technically, if you offer any employee benefit program like health insurance or vision, then you have to be in a wrap document. It's basically a document that outlines exactly what coverage is being available to the employee and how they get access to it. Uh, it is an ERISA document, which is an employment law requirement. Most small businesses don't do this. There is a cost to it. Some brokers waive the cost if there's enough revenue coming in from the health plan, but you definitely need to analyze this and at least um, approach it and know what the risks are. Uh, you should just get it. The cost is far less than what the penalties would be. How about gaining access to HR support and little or no cost to you as the employer and avoid some of those HR hits? You could submit questions or call them and ask them certain employee situations, how to handle things, maybe current law updates that you're not aware of. You could get information on if there's anything that you could print and give the employees or put in the break room. A lot of those resources are available with HR support, uh, again, at little or no cost, depending on the broker that you're using or consultant. Definitely update the I-9s because, and I would just do a clean sweep and just do all of them if you haven't done them in years. If you have a habit of doing it and you have records of it, that's different. But if uh, you kind of come and go because you don't have turnover, uh, definitely just do a clean slate and get them all updated. That'll avoid uh, any penalties in the future if you ever got to audit it. Another thing part of the Affordable Care Act is you have a certain time frame to send out plan benefit summaries. These are It's a requirement because um, the Affordable Care Act had the impression, and that's why they put in the law, 
that employers weren't providing the benefit summaries to the employees so they had an idea what the coverage is. And so the Affordable Care Act, in a lot of ways, just assumed that certain things weren't being done. So, for example, on especially in the smaller groups, pediatric dentals included because they didn't want parents to be held back by taking their kids and getting their teeth checked and having problems with their kids' teeth because they couldn't afford the doctor visit or the dentist visit, rather. So they put it in the plan. Well, the insurance company's just charging for it anyways. But there's other requirements that they claim weren't being done, and now it's a requirement, otherwise the employer's penalized. So distributing the plan summary documents is definitely a requirement. If you had the technology piece, if this was already taken care of during that process, so you're killing two birds with one stone there. But if you didn't do that, you have to make sure you send out the document, it can be printed for them and hand them to them, or you can email everybody, but it has to be documented. So if you ever get audited by this, at least you could prove it. And in some cases, there are certain carriers, like there's a big one in the state of Illinois, they require an employer to go in and actually log in in their um, employer portal. Uh, most other ones don't. They send you an email message on it and say it's um, a requirement, get it done, here's some ideas on how to do it. But uh, not everybody will pay attention to that email, and then there's no follow-through on a lot of it. So definitely get that done and avoid that, and definitely get your green. So see to see where you stand on each one of these areas, um, such as technology and uh, cost containment, employee incentives, and compliance, go to elitebenefits.net forward slash scorecard. Again, elitebenefits.net, not .com, but .net forward slash scorecard. It's actually on the homepage of EliteBenefits.net as well. But click on it. There's a series of like 12 questions. They're super simple. Uh, It'll take you two minutes to fill it out. And then you'll get a report on where you stand in all these areas. Go get your green. It's St. Patty's Day. And have a great and safe holiday. And uh, we'll talk to you next time.